Hello, my name is Mr. Broom, and I will be talking you through this presentation this evening on politics at A level in Stepford Grammar School. Politics is a social science. So, what that means is that it is part art, part science, and that means that it's got massive connections with all other subjects. At the very basic level, it's also an essential part of your citizenship within this country, your ability to know and to protect your rights whilst also understanding those of others. So it gives you huge access to uh, many very well paid and very interesting careers uh, once you've completed your studies at A level. It allows you to build up skills in terms of communication, in terms of uh, research, in terms of Evidencing your information for everything else, it provides you with an opportunity to understand uh, your role in society, what your rights are, and what controls government has over you. As I've mentioned already, Stratford Grammar School, as far as politics is concerned, has got an extremely long history uh, of delivering the subject here. As a result, uh, both Hampshire staff are extremely experienced politics teachers. Um, outside the lessons, we run quite a few extracurricular opportunities. There's a debate society that is flourishing. Uh, we take external trips to the Parliament every year, and also we take um, a cohort of students to America on a regular basis. We work incredibly hard uh, alongside you to get the best results that we can. Um, we encourage wider reading, we uh, encourage you to um, buy uh, periodicals that keep you up to date with things, uh, we attend lectures, but also we set up um, support sessions in terms of preparation for internal and for external exams to make sure that your results are as good as they can be. As I've already mentioned, uh, we are a very compatible subject, both with science and with arts uh, opportunities. Um, there aren't obvious connections with medicine, but if you think about it, understanding the government and how it functions and where funding comes from gives you a greater understanding of the NHS and how it's funded. Uh, also, with COVID and the way it's going at the moment, you can see quite clearly the political ramifications of uh, that particular um, profession. Obviously, having an understanding of the judicial system and the legal system um, is also an integral part of this and gives you a direct link into professions like the legal profession and journalism. As I've said already, we have incredibly strong results uh, on a regular basis, certainly over the last five years and going back a lot further than that. The exam board for politics is Pearson at Excel. There are three components to this course and are all examined at the end of year 13. Uh, that means that there's no coursework connected to this A-level. Uh, in terms of performance, um, we've always done well at this school as far as politics is concerned. We've been teaching it here for well over 25 years. Uh, in the last five years, we've achieved uh, a Grade 2 Alps ranking uh, and a Grade 3 Alps ranking twice, uh, putting us as far as Grade 2 is concerned in the top 10% and Grade 3 in the top 25% of schools in the country. Uh, component one is UK politics and core political ideas, which is a two-hour written paper. Component two is UK government and non-core political ideas, which is a two-hour written exam. And component three is comparative politics, where we look at a comparison between uh, the UK's system of government and the United States system. And again, that is examined in a two-hour exam. You will have two teachers, myself, Mr. Broom, and Ms. Alton. So, component one is UK politics and core political ideas. As the title suggests, there are two different sections to this. Uh, Ms. Allerton teaches the UK politics section, and I teach the core political ideas section. Uh, if you just run through what's there, UK politics covers the ideas of democracy and participation in political parties, how elections work and what different types of electoral systems we have in the UK, and why people vote the, the way that they do and the influence that the media has on that. Um, there are 
two different types of uh, essay question for this particular um, section of the course. Uh, you've got a source question where you're given two choices and you have to select one. Uh, and there's also an essay question on the UK politics, which also comes from a choice of two. Uh, in the core political ideas section, uh, we cover conservatism, liberalism and socialism. So in this section, there are just two straight choices in terms of an essay and you select one. This section is worth 33.3% of the total and is assessed in a two hour written paper at the end of year 13. So as you see from uh, this particular section, the key question here is um, how democratic is the UK? You look at the different questions that are there. We look at how people uh, are elected, uh, how we hold those people to account, looking at other ways in which we help decide policy. So obviously in the last few years, we've had two referenda, one for Scotland and one for Brexit. Um, we also look at the different types of people who elect our politicians, what different levels of politicians that we have, uh, what are the key debates over the whole idea of voting, so that's suffrage, uh, are we um, electing enough times, are we leaving too much time between elections, and how do we actually hold these people to account. Uh, we also look at things like decision making, uh, and whether people are actually good at that particular role. Uh, and what sorts of things influence decision making amongst politicians. Is it about getting re-elected again or is it about doing what's best for the country? We look at the rights that we have and whether we actually um, have sufficient levels of rights to protect us. Um, and as I said already, we look at the different representation that we have, particularly looking at parties and how the system works and whether we need to look at a new type of electoral system. In this section of component one, we look at different ideologies. So we're concentrating on three, conservatism, liberalism, and socialism. So not only are we looking at how they developed uh, initially, we're looking at how they've changed over time, fluctuated in terms of beliefs. We're looking at the key uh, philosophers connected to these ideologies. Uh, and also we're looking at them in terms of interlinking with each other, how one developed from another, etc., etc. Component 2 covers UK government and non-core political ideas. So in this section we look at the functioning side of things. So how does UK government work? The role of the House of Commons, the role of the House of Lords, the power of Prime Minister and the Cabinet, and what relationships are like between the branches. And of course we look at the Constitution, which is obviously different from America, but nonetheless is very much in place. Uh, in this section, uh, the questions, um, are uh, from a choice of two. You have a 30 mark question, uh, which is based on the source, uh, and then you also have a 30 mark essay question from a choice of two. As with component one, this is divided into two sections. So the second section is the non core political ideas section. Uh, we studied feminism uh, at Stratford Grammar School. Uh, in this second part, you have one essay question from a choice of two. This whole component is taught by Mrs. Allison, and it's worth 33.3% of the total. Again, it's assessed in a two-hour written paper at the end of year 13. In this first section of component two, we're looking at the UK government, how it functions. So we're looking at where our government ideas came from in terms of the UK constitution, how that's developed over an 800 year period. Um, we're looking at how power within parliament is developed and also expanded outside parliament into the devolved assemblies of Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. And we're going to be looking as well at the legislative process. So for those of you that are interested in law, the whole putting together of, a, of an act of parliament and ultimately how law is upheld with the powers of the Supreme Court. We look at how Parliament interacts with the executive, so in other words, the Prime Minister and his cabinet. Uh, and we look at what the powers of that executive are and how different methods of government uh, are advanced within the executive, depending on the Prime Minister that you've got. Uh, ultimately, we, we look at as well how the executive is held to account. 
what the powers of the Supreme Court are and what role and structure they have within the UK. And although we just left the European Union, uh, we still look at what the aims, role and impact of the European Union is on the UK government and the laws that we make. Ultimately, we're looking at whether this country is a democracy or not. This final section in component two works very much in the same way as the, as the corpus Claudia section. Recovering feminism, as I've said already, and we're looking at the core ideas and principles of feminism and how they've changed over time. In that, we will be looking at different feminist thinkers and how their ideas have moved the ideology forward. And we'll be looking specifically at how feminism relates to human nature, the state, society, and the economy, as we do in the core political ideas in component one. In component three, we cover route A, which is comparable government between the UK and the United States. So effectively, we look at exactly the same areas that we do in units one and two, uh, looking at things like the constitution, the different branches of government, Congress, the executive, the Supreme Court, uh, and also voting behavior, democracy, etc. So it's a, as I say, it's a comparison element. This is taught totally by me, Mr. Broom. It's worth 33.3% the final mark, and again, it's assessed in a two-hour written paper at the end of year 13. As you can see here, we look at six different sections. Uh, obviously, this has been in the news a heck of a lot over the last four years. Uh, those of you that are massively interested in the legal profession, but also in the functioning of government and in your own rights, this is going to give you an alternative viewpoint uh, from America. Um, there are three different questions in this particular paper. Uh, you've got two short questions in both section A and B that cover 12 marks. Uh, you have a choice in section A of one from two, but there's a compulsory question in section B. Uh, section C is the essay section. You have a choice of two essays to do from three, uh, and each of those is worth 30 marks. The very fact that I can compress this down into one slide gives an idea about how much there is to discuss about government and politics in the United States. We look at the Constitution, the power of it, the way in which power is divided up amongst the states, but also between the different branches of government, uh, whether there are um, different ways in which the US Constitution can be interpreted, leading ultimately to the choice of Supreme Court judges that are picked by presidents. Uh, we look at the different institutions in terms of Congress and the Supreme Court and the executive, but also we look at the role of state governments as well. So the status of government and politics in the United States is just like any other political system. It's always changing. There are always things that are getting people's attention. But the last four years have been massive in terms of the amount of change and fluctuation going on. Uh, the Supreme Court has played a massive role in all of that, not just in terms of rulings, but also in terms of the type of people who are being picked by the president to serve on the Supreme Court. Um, so we look at the appointment process. Civil rights is a huge issue and always has been a huge issue. So we look at just how divided the United States still is, despite everything that's gone on in the last 40, 50 years, uh, and how that still causes problems um, for them on the domestic level and on the international stage. Um, we look at what should the Supreme Court do in terms of ruling? Should it just sit back and follow the Constitution from 250 years ago, or should it move with the times? We look at elections, we look at the people who um, take part in them, we also look at the different levels of election that there are in the United States, uh, and what influences decision making, the role of interest groups, the role of parties, the role of the media, uh, and also social media. Ultimately, we're looking at a comparison between the United States and Britain. In terms of enrichment, uh, we have a, a very uh, well thought of and, and functioning debate club, which is attended by all year groups, uh, but that gives opportunities for people to lead it in sixth form. We often have question time uh, sittings where local MPs are invited to uh, receive questions from the school body. We take university trips uh, for lectures, but also for people to visit. I've already mentioned that we run politics trips to the parliament. Um, and also we have opportunities within school to, to, for people to help with lower 
school teaching in classes. Uh, ultimately, uh, the big thing here is the trip to Washington, Philadelphia, and New York, which is run every three, uh, every two years. Sorry, so basically, you will have a choice either to attend that in year 12 or in year 13.